Hey there Luma, this is the Seed Stitch Poncho and I'm Denise from LumaHead.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a medium version of the poncho. If you're needing a larger version, visit LumaHead.store to get the written pattern and be sure to sign up for the newsletter so that you can get coupons and lots of other stuff. Alright, for this one, you're going to need a large gauge loom with at least 41 pegs, 495 yards of chunky yarn, a hook, a needle, scissors, and optional stitch markers. Let's get started. Because many of you guys ask, here's my stitch marker setup. I have one peg here with a metal marker and then I use rubber bands that extend and I mark sets of two which is how i'm going to work my pattern with the last two in a different color to help you distinguish the last two and as you follow the stitch pattern you'll see why okay let's get to the cast on for this medium version we're going to u wrap cast on 41 pegs so i'm going to take a single strand of my chunky yarn and i'm going to use a simple knot to Secure my yarn to the anchor peg. You can use a slip knot if you're more comfortable. And then I'm going to completely wrap each peg. From the back to the front, I wrap each peg. By the way, you can use any cast on that you're comfortable with. This one just happens to work for me. And I'm working on a round loom. You can work on a long loom, on an Afghan loom. The shape of the loom is not going to matter. This is a 5-8 large gauge loom as long as it has the right number of pegs okay once you get to that last peg you're going to turn around because we're knitting flat you're going to take a, a wrap it on the top and take the bottom loop over the top and knit off that's that last peg and you're going to do that one more time go ahead and wrap that last peg take the bottom loop over the top and knit off okay it's going to make it look a little different and you're going to be glad you did it now half wrap the next peg and knit off from this point on you're just going to half wrap the peg and knit off that's the u wrap version of the knit stitch and that's how we're going to complete the cast on again you could use whatever cast on you're comfortable with this one works really good for me so half wrap knit off and you need to finish all 41 pegs if you're doing the larger your number is different once you're done with your cast on of all your pegs you're then ready for row one in this row you're going to slip one then e-wrap one and purl one continuously until you get to those last two remember we spoke about the last two pegs when you get to those last two you're going to e-wrap those last two pegs let me show you what that looks like so we're here we're going in the opposite direction the first thing we're going to do is slip that first peg so in my peg one I slip it means I do not knit it I basically just skip that peg and go to the second one and to e-wrap I completely wrap the peg and then take the bottom loop over the top and I knit off that's my e-wrap one for my purl, I put my working yarn under the existing loop, create a new loop, take the old one off, put the new one on, and pull. And then I'm going to continue to do that. So my next two, again, are e-wrap one, purl one. So I e-wrapped one. Here's my purl. I put my working yarn under the existing loop. There's my new loop. Take the existing loop off the peg, put the new loop on the peg, and pull to tighten the stitch. Now... You're going to e-wrap purl one again. That is your stitch pattern for row one. So regardless of the number of stitches you have, whether you're doing the medium or the large, you're going to e-wrap and then purl one all the way until you get to the end of the row, regardless of the number of pegs. And then the last two pegs, you're going to e-wrap them. Okay, so continue with the stitch pattern of e-wrap e one, purl one. Here are my last two pegs. And so I'm going to completely wrap both pegs, take the bottom loop over the top, and knit them both off. That's the end of row one. I'm now ready for row two. And for this row, I'm going to slip one. I'm always going to start with a slip, or in other words, skip one. 
I'm going to then purl one and then I'm going to start the E-wrap purl one continuously until the very last peg and that last peg I'm going to E-wrap it. So again I'm on that first peg which I'm going to skip or in other words slip same thing I'm turning around I'm going in the opposite direction and first I'm gonna purl a stitch so I put my working yarn under the existing loop scoop up to create a new loop take the existing loop off the peg and put the new loop on pull to tighten and now I'm ready for that stitch pattern again which is like a rib basically of an e-wrap purl one now if you don't have stitch markers and you kind of want to mark the loom in, in some manner you can wrap the peg and then purl the next one and come back later and knit off and that kind of lets you know where you left off with the e-wrap that's just an idea sometimes i do it just because i don't know i just go faster if i wrap the pegs all my e-wraps do my purl stitches and then come back and knit, knit off all of those e-wraps it's a good idea to find a rhythm that works for you this might not work it might be too confusing but in my case i do find that i go faster by doing this way so you see that i wrap the the peg and then go right from that e-wrap into that purl stitch uh, and then when i finish my row completely i've done my last one before i get to the next row i come back and i take all the those uh bottom loops and i knit them off like this see super easy keep going now as i get to the end of my row here are the last two um e-wrap and purl stitches and then remember that on this row it says that when you get to the last stitch you're going to e-wrap and so this is my last stitch right here on the of this row I'm gonna wrap it take the bottom loop over the top knit off and I'm done that's it I finished that row and now what I'm going to do because my yarn is secure is I'm gonna go ahead and take the knot off the anchor peg you want to make sure you don't leave that there it's not a good idea all right you're done with that now you're ready for rows 3 through 20 where you're gonna repeat rows one and two nine more times. So I know that when I have this in the pattern, for some people, this is confusing. So I wanna give you a visual where you can actually see these row, rows repeating. These are the repeats, okay? So for instance, three and four look exactly like one and two. And you can see that five and six are exactly one and two, seven and eight, one and two these are repeats every one of those three and four is one repeat five and six is another repeat so you're going to repeat rows one and two nine more times for a total of 20 and once you've done that then you're ready for row 21 but first you have to repeat rows one and two nine more times so keep knitting Once you're finished with that, then you're ready for rows 21 and 22, which are so super easy. You're gonna slip one and then e-wrap 40. You basically know how to do this, but again, we're gonna skip that first peg. And then I wrap all the rest of my pegs first. I wrap all 40 of them. And once I'm done with that row, I'm gonna come back and then knit them off. You don't have to do it that way. You can knit like a few of them, knit them off and then knit up and you know, and then wrap a few of them and knit them off. However you wanna do it, there is no wrong way. Just e-wrap your 40 pegs. So you slip one or in other words, skip one and then e-wrap 40. Again, remember that if you want a larger version of this, you can get the written pattern at lumahead.store and follow that stitch and row count. So you're done with 21. Now we're ready for 22. You're knitting flat, so you're going in the other direction. Start wrapping your pegs. While you're doing this, I wanna take this time to say thank you to Jessica, my Patreon patron for inspiring this project. I hope she loves it. 
And a very, very special thank you to Carol Maple from Promise Learning ATL, Penny Pitchard, Barbara Ledger, Linda Rapp, and Tara Nichols for covering the cost of closed captioning this and so many of our videos. Thank you so much, ladies. This is very appreciated. All right, guys, keep on knitting. When you're finished with row 22, you've knit off all of your pegs. You're then ready for row 23. Row 23 is also easy. You're gonna slip one, purl 38, and then E-wrap one. We're at the first one where you're skipping, and then you're just gonna start purling. And you guys know how to purl. Put the yarn under the existing loop, scoop up, create a new loop, take the old one off, put the new one on, and pull. And you're gonna continue to do that all the way until you get to the end of the row. When you get to that last stitch, you're gonna E-wrap. So here's my end of the row, and as you can see, we're gonna go ahead and E-wrap. And now you're ready for row 24 where you can't get any easier. You're gonna slip that first peg and then you're gonna E-wrap the next 40. I don't even need to explain this to you. You know how to do this. Wrap, 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 wrap. Knit off, knit off, knit off. And then you're ready for rows 25 through 40. For these rows, you're going to repeat rows 21 through 24 four more times. And just like last time, let me show you what the repeats look like. Here are three of the four sets. You see that 25, 26, 27, 28, they look just like 21 through 24. So do 29 through 32. You're repeating those same four rows four more times. Those 40 stitches, when you're done, create two blocks of different stitch pattern samples. So you have the seed stitch first, which was 20 stitches, and then 20 stitches that are really called a pearl ridge pattern. We're gonna repeat those two stitch patterns, which are made up of 40 rows. We're gonna repeat that two more times. So let me show you what that looks like in the pattern. The pattern then says that for rows 41 through 120, you're gonna repeat rows one through 40 two more times. And because you've done repeats in other sections so many times, I wanna show you a better look at what I'm trying to say in this particular section. I didn't even bother to change the numbers so that you could clearly see the repeats. You are repeating rows one through 40 two more times to get a total of 120. So you've already done those 40 rows. You're just gonna do them again two more times. Also, it's a good idea to keep count of your rows on paper and please pay attention to the written pattern. All right, let's keep going. When you're done knitting the 120 rows, you're then ready for row 121 where you're gonna slip one and then E-wrap one, purl one until the last two stitches, those last two stitches, you will E-wrap. This looks exactly like row one because it is row one. You're gonna follow that with row 122 where you're gonna slip one and then purl one and then you're gonna E-wrap purl one until the last stitch where you're going to E-wrap one and this looks exactly like row two because it is exactly row two. When you're done with those rows, you're then going to knit rows 123 to 130 where you're going to repeat those two last rows four more times. And you guys know how to do repeats. I've showed you and you know. Row 130 is the last row and I'm so confident you know what you're doing that we're gonna go right to the cast off and we're gonna use the basic bind off of all your pegs. But before I get there, let me say thank you to you if you've gone this far. That helps you and me. It helps you because it's always a good idea to watch the video completely before you start the project. And it helps me because it tells YouTube that you like my work a lot. So thank you. Please remember to comment, to like, and please, 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 please share the video. 
big time helps me a lot and if you haven't already done so of course subscribe all right let's get to that cast off The basic bind off is done over two pegs and so we're going to start with pegs one and two. First thing you're going to do is take your working yarn and you're going to wrap both pegs one and two at the beginning. We're going to e-wrap, take the hook and knit them off both pegs and then you're going to take the loop that's on peg two and you're going to move it over to peg one, tighten that stitch and take the bottom loop over the top to knit that one off and then take the loop off peg one and move it over to peg two. Tighten the stitch and now peg one has been cast off, right? Doesn't have doesn't have a st stitch anymore and now you have two new pegs one and two. So this time you're gonna only wrap peg two, knit it off, take the loop off of that your new peg two, bring it over to your new peg one, tighten it, take the bottom loop over the top and knit off. And then you take the loop off your new peg one and you move it over. Tighten that stitch and now you see that two pegs have been cast off and now you have a new pegs one and two. So you wrap your new peg two, knit off, Take the loop off of that peg two, bring it over to your new peg one, tighten the stitch, take the bottom loop over the top and knit off and take that loop from your new peg one over to your new peg two. Now there's three of them that you cast off and then you just continue to do this. Remember every time you cast one off, you have a new pegs one and two and you do the same procedure as you continue. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind, if things get tight, which sometimes they do with the basic bind off, then here's a modification I usually do at the middle of my cast off. So I will wrap both one and two when the cast off starts to get tight and it looks like I need a little give on my fabric. Then I continue to do the process, same as I've been doing, Again, I only modify that and in this case, I think I did it in the middle uh, of that loom. So about 20 stitches in. Then I continue just like I was doing before. Um, I wrap the second peg, knit off, take it off that loop, bring it over, you know, keep going. Now, when you get to your last set, which is where I'm going to be here we're not doing anything different in that we're going to work those two pegs like we've been doing and so I'm going to wrap that second peg knit it off tighten my stitch and bring it over and tighten my stitch and then take the bottom loop off the top I'm gonna with my hook pull on that because now I'm gonna release the project from the uh, knitting loom and I'm gonna cut my working yarn you can leave a long tail if you want to use it to sew I don't so I just cut regular and then I want you to see how great this bind off looks it looks really neat it looks nice and tight and you could leave it as it is you can be done here and just make another panel but I want to show you something on the other end is your cast on and as you can see those cast on stitches they're a bit more loose they're bigger then you're cast off and so it's not even and I don't like that look you don't need to do this but I'm gonna tighten my stitches and I'm gonna start by taking uh, this working yarn right here make sure I take my knot off and then I'm gonna pull it out of the stitch that it's in right there see it's loose now and I'll show you why I did that when I get there now I go to the other end and I look for those really big loose loops and I start to pull them see how quickly those stitches the cast on starts to look like the cast off because they're tighter when you pull on those loops those loose loops you tighten the ones before it and that makes it look a lot more like the cast off 
uh, stitches and so I will continue to pull on these loose loops in order to tighten the cast on this is why I do the U wrap and E wrap cast on because I can do this because I can tighten my stitches it is worth learning to do this technique it can get a little funky sometimes make a swatch if it gets too tight just make a knot here like I, I'm showing you and then just cut on it if it gets tight for some reason and you can't pull it through um, and then just keep going on the rest of it it's so worthwhile it's a great technique please practice and learn how to do it it makes every project look better when you reach the last ones where you're pulling that very last one then just grab the end put it in through that loop and make a knot to secure the yarn and that's it everything is secure now you can just weave it in the first panel is done it measures 18 by 30 inches or 51 by 76 centimeters you need two panels that are identical so make another one and then we're ready to assemble I've cut two pieces of paper uh, to show you how we're going to bring these two pieces together. So here's piece one and here is piece two. And they basically resemble the two panels that I made. It's just easier to show you with these pieces of paper with, than with the actual huge fabric. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to bring these two panels together and you're going to form a letter L. And then I'm going to use tape to show you where you're going to sew. And later on, I'll show you how I actually sew them together. But for now, this is just easier to show you what I'm doing. So here's my piece of tape. And right here, forming that letter L, I'm going to sew these two pieces together. In this case, I'm going to tape them together. And uh, one thing I want you to keep in mind is the front of the fabric as opposed to the back, okay? So keeping that in mind, you're going to sew those two pieces together. And then you're going to bring one, in this case, this is my piece A, my first piece one. And I'm going to fold it over like this, okay? And you see right there, you can almost see the poncho coming together. And then you're going to bring the other piece in like this, and you're gonna sew it here. So you're basically sewing these two pieces in two places, first here, then you can fold. You see that it's not, there's only one way to fold it so that it's folding correctly. So you'll know that you're folding it correctly. There's no way to fold it wrong. All right, so you sewed it in one place and here's where the other place is gonna be. There's only two places that you're sewing these together and you see that it forms that um, triangle and there's your poncho so now I'm going to show you with the actual fabric how I'm going to bring these together so again this is where that I formed that letter L and with locking stitch markers you could do this with whatever you like to use to bring your two pieces of fabric together to sew I use locking stitch markers with my knitted fabric um, you know, you could use push pins or whatever works for you. And what this does is it just helps me to see the um, two pieces, how they're going to look before I actually start sewing. I always like to get a visual first. So there's my L. And now I'm going to take my, my top parts and I'm going to fold them down. So... Again, I'm gonna make sure that my fabric is on the correct side. They're both facing forward. And then I'm gonna fold one in. Here's how I'm folding that one in. And then I fold the other one this way. And that's my poncho. I'm gonna sew it there. And so I go ahead and I add my locking stitch markers. Again, so that the uh, wearable is forming into a poncho and I can visually see before I sew that I did fold it correctly and I'm going to get what I'm intending to get. I don't want to sew it and then figure out that I did it wrong and that it's actually both of them are on the correct side. Then I'm going to get a really really long about eight inches worth of um, a strand of yarn and I'm going to sew right here. 
the first thing I'm going to do after I thread my needle is at the very edge. As you can see right here, I'm going to look at the very tippy tippy edge. I'm going to bring those two pieces of fabric together and I'm going to put my uh, sewing needle through them, leaving a little bit of that strand out so I can make a knot. Not everybody likes to do it this way. This works for me. Later, I'm going to weave it in. And then I'm going to go to uh, the next ones down and I'm going to sew them. And now my edges, my two edges are locked in. And then I'm going to start sewing upwards. By the way, I'm sewing on the um, inside on the wrong basically the wrong side of the fabric but because this is like the mattress stitch it's not going to matter it's going to look fine on both sides you can see that i go in through um the inside of the stitch i bring my needle which is basically like in the middle of the inside and i bring the two fabric pieces together so this is called the mattress stitch and right here, I'm gonna bring you a little closer later on so you could see, I just wanna give you kind of like a um, an outside look at what I'm doing. I'm gonna bring you in a little closer so you can actually see how I'm feeding the needle into the fabric to sew it. I wouldn't overthink this way too much. What you're trying to do is just bring in your two pieces of fabric together you're trying to bring in those two rectangles to form this rectangle right and so if you have a favorite way of sewing your knitted fabrics use what you know how to use what you're comfortable with sometimes when we overthink these things we make it more complicated than it should be okay so there you see um my two pieces but here I'm bringing you in so you can see up close how I'm sewing so see that I come in and then I grab that little knot on the inside of the stitches on the edges uh, hopefully you can see this right here there it goes okay so I go from side to side so I go up feed it through and then come over to the other side and go upward and then i'm pulling a little bit don't pull tight because you'll wrinkle it just pull a little bit and look how nice and clean it looks so up and over and up and over this is the one that works for me you have to figure out um what's going to work best for you and then just keep sewing you're sewing two, only two parts. And so here I am at the end of this. Now I'm up at the top, almost where, where the collar is. These are, these are the, this is the last bit that I'm gonna sew. And I'm gonna secure my yarn really well. And so I'm going to um, sew that in and then weave it in so I'm, I'm on the uh, outside make sure that you bring the fabric the um, strand into the wrong side of the fabric and that you weave these in really really good I go in one direction and then I turn around when I'm weaving in these ends I'll turn it around and go in the opposite direction so that I know that that it's not going to come out that it stays in so there you see once I sew it I take off my locking stitch markers I take them all off and you can see that it's nice and neat um, it's brought together on the two sides and I formed my uh, rectangle I'm gonna come in and do the other side and that's it that's how easy it is to create this beautiful poncho all right Luma Stick around because YouTube is going to show you other projects they think you're going to like and so do I. Alright, till next time when you come back and loom with me again.